Hey there! In this quick screencast, I'm going to talk about using Grunt, a workflow task runner, and Bower, a front-end package manager, as a part of your Polymer application. Now, in this reference project, we have a few specific files that are of interest to us. First, we have our Grunt file. Now, this is basically a file detailing all of our different build task configuration for the project. Tasks are specified in a package.json file, the same way that they would be in, in pretty much any Grunt project. Now, in case you haven't played around with Grunt before, the basic contents of our Grunt file for, for a modern web app might be some CSS and JavaScript concatenation setup. Um, we might be doing some image optimization, uh, running unit tests. So in this case, uh, we're using Mocha to run our unit tests, uh, running JS hints against our code base, and a number of real other really interesting things in case you're you know, maybe using uh, CoffeeScript or Compass. Now the first thing I'm going to call attention to in this file for Polymer developers is the watch task. Now watch basically lets us um, live reload our application. So what that means is that if you're editing your application and you want to be able to preview what it looks like and, and what behaviors um, are actually experienced by your users in real time, you can have the browser side by side with your editor and any changes you make will be refreshed in the browser without you having to go and manually refresh it yourself. So we can actually do that with our Polymer elements. So I've got some custom configuration in here to keep an eye on all of our Polymer elements and, and any Polymer element CSS. And I can actually go into my application. So I'm, first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the command line. And uh, the way that I trigger watch is by calling grunt server. So this is gonna set up a local server for me um, running the watch task. So I'm just gonna run grunt server. And this will just take a second. Um, this basically gives me an interim version of my application um, with my CoffeeScript compiled if I'm using that or, or any of my other abstractions. And I can then start going and previewing my application. So it's just going to fire this off in just a second. And once it has, I'm just going to resize my editor. So it's gone and it's fired it off. I'm just going to resize my editor now. Um, and I'll be able to take a look at my application right next to my editor. Great. So I'm going to go over to my application directory. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my index file. Now what you probably notice in the app we have right here is that we have a h1 with the word to-dos in there. Let's change that to say my awesome Polymer to-dos and save. Now as soon as I've saved, the browser is gone and it's automatically refreshed, showing me the current state of the application. Now that's great, but you know, I'm, I'm a Polymer developer, I want to be able to do this with my Polymer elements. So I'm going to go and th these are basically the list of different elements that make up this application. And I'm just going to pick one at random, let's say TD item. Now in TD item, this basically um, controls you know, all of the different uh, structure for the, the list items that we see in our app. So I'm just going to go over to the label um, for, for each of these items. And I'm going to prepend the, uh, the title with the word important and just save. And so my application is going to automatically reload. And I can now see instantly reflected important. Now this is part of my um, specific TD item Polymer element. And I could basically do this for any of my other um, HTML imports. And I, I have this nice view of my current app state um, side by side with my editor, which is great. Now, the next thing you probably care about is, you know, um, building your, your Polymer project. Because if, you, you know, if you're shipping something to production, you probably want to be able to do things like, you know, um, concatenate and minify your CSS and your JavaScript and, and, and optimize any images that you might have in your project. Now, the way that you do this is by just running grunt. So I'm first of all, I'm going to just kill off this server we had running locally. Let's just clear the screen. And I'm just going to run grunt. Now what this is going to do is it's going to run through all of my different tasks. Um, it's also going to try running my unit tests. And uh, once it's checked that all of that's gone OK, it's going to create an optimized production um, ready version of my application. So right now it's, it's running my Mocha unit tests. Um, that should hopefully just take a second or two because I don't really have many, if any, um, in place. So as soon as this is done, it'll go and optimize the rest of my project files. Um, and I can then just, you know, drop that file into production. So you can see it's, it's doing a bunch of other stuff. Concatenation, running things through Uglify.js. Um, and once this is ready, you can just push it up to production and everything's going to be, be awesome. Great. So I'm not going to let this continue running. I'm just going to kill this process off. But uh, 
So that's that's basically how you 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 know optimize a basic modern web application. But in Polymer land, we've got a few other things we have to keep in mind. Now, because we're working with uh, HTML imports, you know, a lot of standard front end tooling doesn't yet understand how to work with those things. Um, it's not able to concatenate those different assets for you, um, and so our grunt file has some other custom configuration in here to help with that. So in this exec task, which can basically run any binary for me, um, I have a subtask called Vulkan. Now Vulkan is the name of a tool that uh, was written by Daniel Friedman on the Palmer team, which can concatenate a set of web components into a single file. Now here all I'm doing is I'm calling out to Node, asking it to run the Vulkanizer tool, and um, giving it uh, to basically telling it the entry point to my Polymer application once it's been um, optimized, at least first level optimized, and asking it to um, put that finally optimized um, version inside a file called build.html. I'm also passing just a, a little bit of configuration in here. Now Vulkan is still very much a tool that's in progress, um, and so the reason why we're writing a separate file rather than over our index.html is to give you a choice, you know, between either a version that isn't, you know, that isn't fully concatenated um, and one that is. So you can make a choice as to whether you think, you know, the, the one that's been further optimized is uh, stable enough for your production needs. And uh, the way it's, when I, when I just run grunt, um, it'll actually also run this Vulkan task for me. But if I want, I can just run grunt wc build, and this will only run um, you know, the final application through, through the Vulkanizer tool for me, so I don't have to go and rerun all of my other tasks if I don't need that in place. So that's great. We've talked about, you know, we've talked about workflow with live reload. We've talked about build process. Now, these are still areas that are being, um, you know, uh, evolved over time, so please don't consider any of this stuff final um, at all. But uh, the next thing we're going to look at is package management. Now, inside this application, um, if we take a look at the Bower components directory, you'll see that all of our dependencies for this app have actually been installed using Bower. So we have Director, um, we've got jQuery, Modernizer, and Polymer itself is actually being installed by Bower as well. So I'm going to go um, over to the command line and, and Bower. Now let's say that I want to be able to install a new component, a new Polymer component into um, my application, a new Polymer element. So let's say Bower search and Polymer. Now what this is doing is it's querying the Bower package management registry, trying to find any packages that have the word Polymer in them. And as you can see, I published a few um, a week or two ago that, that have Polymer in their name. Now, again, you know, we're not saying, you know, this is where Polymer uh, elements are necessarily going to live, but um, this is one way of doing it. So I can just now do Polymer install, you know, Polymer local storage. And if I hit enter, it would actually go and fetch this dependency, the latest version of this dependency that was published, and just drop it inside my Bower components directory. I can then go and reference it inside any of my Polymer elements, inside my index.html file, or anything that I want. Now, this doesn't really make sense in this case because I already have Polymer local storage in the app, but you can imagine actually having this as part of your workflow. Now, what we're, what we're considering at the moment is, you know, whether or not Polymer elements should exist separately or as, or as part of, you know, a master repository of some sort so that, you know, maybe, maybe you do, you know, Bower install Polymer and then, you know, local storage or, or something like that. Um, and that will go and fetch, you know, your components from a, from a master repo. But this is stuff that's, that's still very much evolving. Um, but this is sort of, you know, this is, this is one take of, of how you can set these things up using Grunt and Bower. We're actually looking at how we can capture all of this workflow for you um, using Yeoman, which is a scaffolding tool for the front end. But um, I hope this stuff is useful. Uh, I'm going to put all this stuff up on GitHub so you can, you can go grab it. The name of this project is Polymer Grunt Example. Um, and feel free to play around with it. I'm sure there's tons of stuff that can be improved. Um, if you see any ways that we can improve it further, you know, please feel free to let me know or, or submit a pull request. But uh, yeah, that's it for now, and I hope this is useful.